Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So um, I've just getting back home, I've yeah, been back home a couple of days, been working away again unfortunately for me. So what have I been up to? I have um, just started on another coffee table for a client. Um, so I've been using some elm for the tabletop. Um, it did actually have some woodworm in it, or remnants of woodworm. The woodworm's um, totally gone now, obviously. Um, but it's the woodworm left its history, or woodworms rather left the history. But it actually has turned out pretty well. Um, I've actually managed to get it where there's very few holes. Um, and I'll be able to, you know, keep what I wanted to keep um, grain wise because it has got some actually lovely grain. Um, when I put the oil on it, the Osmo oil, I believe it's going to really pop uh, the grain, which it normally does anyway. But it's going to just like you know, emphasise the beauty of the elm, um, which I'm I'm quite eager to do that. Yeah, I think it's going to look really really good. I've still got the joinery to cut for it. Uh, I am actually making a video for this. Um, so it will probably be broken up into a couple of videos because there is some bridal joints to cut. So I'm going to be showing um, the bridal joints. This is actually going to be, it's not going to be an end bridal joint, an end bridal, bridal, <laughs> bridal joint. It's actually going to be kind of, um, into the woods so um, how to describe this I, I don't know what, what you would actually call the joint so rather than it being like a kind of a 90 degree joint like um, at the end of a joint which I have demonstrated before so this is actually going to be a leg and it's going to be set back you know so th there isn't going to be like no um how to describe this it's it's actually going to be like like in the middle of a piece of wood if you like um kind of like a, um if you could imagine a mortise and tenon joints you know in a in multiple panels kind of the best way i could describe it although i'm not describing this very well so i did actually do a little bit of a short video um that was today and i did actually put that on uh, instagram and youtube there'll be links in the description if you want to check those out uh, check the video out basically i'm demonstrating um how i was holding uh, the work top uh, sorry the tabletop roller um both edges are actually curved so um i just basically as usual using my roman workbench um and had the piece clamped up to um the notch accessory really simple but you know if anyone's kind of doing work where it is curved and it would actually rock on the room workbench it might be worth um having a look at the video like i said it's a short video it's like a minute long so it's on youtube and instagram if you want to go and check that out i did as well also record um cutting the curve on the um tabletop so I am probably going to do another short YouTube video um, that should be released um, the same day as this podcast gets released. So again, if you want to check that out, it'll be a link in the description. So today I thought I'd just talk about kind of um, tool ergonomics, if I'm saying that right. That's the word of the day, ergonomics. It's quite a big word for me, that. <laughs> um yeah so i'm going to talk about that um you know uh, go over a few tools basically you know like the uh, handles of things and how the um basically how the handle like in your hand how they work um you know maybe a little bit about the balance uh, the, the design um kind of, these are just my thoughts you know it's obviously they're not set in stone um you know just take them with a pinch of salt these are just, um, as I said, just my thoughts. Yeah, they could be very wrong or, you know, they might be correct. Um, so I'm going to start with an axe. So I haven't really had a lot of experience with axes, although I do own a couple of axes and I do use them from time to time. Um, 
what I see, and these must be on um, cheaper axes, is the handles, especially the the shorter the shorter style there, um, handles, um, you know, axes, you know, where you can kind of do a little bit of everything with them. You can, you know, like do a little bit of, say, some carving with them, um, some spoon carving. Um, use them to, you know, break up small sections of material, um, you know, yeah, so on and so forth. What I've seen is that handles aren't kind of, um, I can't say they're not fit for purpose, but they're kind of not er ergonomically designed, like, to work um, with you, if you like, so... One of the good designs I've seen, um, there's actually a woman who I follow on Instagram. Um, I think it's is a calf of all calf of all axes. I think um, I'll leave a link in the description um, if anyone's actually kind of looking for an axe. Um, they are they are like a little bit expensive, um, but they are handmade. Um, you know in they actually look really really good um i don't know anyone that's actually bought one of these axes but i am <laughs> i am kind of thinking about getting one i've been thinking about getting one for quite some time um they look really really good just the design of them everything about them and obviously they are handmade and you kind of that's what you're paying for so i haven't got a problem with you know we're, we're paying the money for for handmade goods you know i've talked about this um um, a couple of times whether it be tools or whatever else if it's handmade you know I do actually appreciate and I do understand um, the time and effort that goes into stuff like that so um, as I've said this was the first time I've actually um, kind of seen this and um, in um, I'm I'm sure our names uh, I'm sure the names Cafe I could be very wrong but but anyway I'm I'm going to refer to the to the woman as Caf. <laughs> um and in her axes uh, it's kind of what I would kind of call like a bit of a swan neck um and again I'm I'm probably not using the right terminology here but I'm sure you can grasp what I'm talking about Charlie like, so a bit of a swan neck where just underneath the 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 axe itself the axe head it actually sw it's it's it kind of curves out a little bit and this is really good because it just ergonomically fix, fits your hand better um and you're able to put your first finger um on the blade and you know you're able to do a little bit of carving you know you get better control and obviously when you move further down the axe handle say you've got to have a you know you know you've got to have a bit of a swing you you know you want to give it a little bit welly um for whatever reason maybe you you know you're breaking a little bit of material up um you know it gets wider at the bottom um you know um i don't even know what you know the terminology for that is but basically it does taper down and it's a nice taper you know the way she actually makes the handles um you know this it, it is you, you can actually just say that it's just ergonomically good um you know if you're gonna if you're gonna take a bit of a swing you know at a piece of material you know it's it's just the way it's designed the way it's you know it's tapered it, it isn't just going to slip out your hand whereas compared to um you know a straight piece of wood there is the 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 problem where it might actually swing out of your hand you don't really want um to lose control of an axe um you know you're going to do a lot of damage to eli yourself someone around you or you know whatever else you know if you've got you know i don't know like things in your workshop or whatever you know it just you can't, it's just a bad idea all around to lose control of an axe isn't it so that's why the design is kind of like that obviously she's not the only person that um, does this there is a there is another um, person who i do follow on instagram and for the life of us i can't um, think of his uh, name but he, he obviously does um you know like a like a similar design um he actually makes the same again he makes the handles himself i think 
he may have some some woodland somewhere you I actually own some woodland um so I know he does um ash um handles and stuff uh, I do believe he gets the um the axe heads uh, reclaimed and obviously you know he works his magic with those so yeah that, that's it for axes um you know um I don't know if I've explained that as well as I wanted to explain it but yeah <laughs> that's how it is so um the next one would be um the block plane specifically the block plane that i own in it's actually in the thumbnail picture for this uh, depending on where you watch uh, watching or listening you should be able to see a thumbnail hopefully so i don't like this <laughs> Yeah, I've talked about this before. I really do not like the ergonomics of this plane. First things first, when I pick it up, it's it's heavy. It's too heavy. I do not like the weight of it. It's a beautifully machine machined um, plane. I kind of felt the you know the machining of it. It's it's really good. This is um, a Kushang. Um, I've talked about these before, but it's not specifically Kushang because obviously they they do kind of copy um other planes so i think this is a i, I can't even give you the uh, the number of it um no it's to totally slipped my mind um but it is pictured in the thumbnail you know so you will be able to see it so as i said the first thing it's just far too heavy it's i really really don't like it I've got to use two hands with it and yeah I know you you know like uh, on the uh, block planes you have got to use two hands it, well, you don't have to use two hands you know but it, you know you do get more control when you're using two hands but sometimes you have got the need for whatever reason just to use one hand and for me that's just it's just too it's just too heavy um you know and i've actually got a really strong grip um obviously i've been scaffolding for um like you know i think it's coming up to 24 years now um so i've got a very strong grip obviously i'm i'm gripping steel tubes all day long you know so you, you can't imagine me grips like super strong stronger than the average person that doesn't um scaffold that is so as i said that's one of the issues um another one of the issues that adds to the problem for me is that um where the could you call it the 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 palm section the section that would that's actually curved and that would fit into your palm and you've actually got two finger dents or grooves either side of um this plane um and a lot of other planes as well um me personally with us having smaller hands um i feel it's just it's just too far too far away f um too far apart where the you know the pot the palm heel section and where the finger is it's just too far apart and i can't get a grip of it properly um that's another issue for me I really don't like that um i also don't like the way um the the thumb screw and um, to adjust the um you know the plane blade backwards and forwards i don't like how far that protrudes um that can be a little bit annoying to me um actually i actually am on the lookout for another block plane um i have actually got an apron plane but i kind of want to i kind of want to get in between an apron plane and a block plane I don't know i haven't really done a lot of research on this but i kind of want to get something like in between that and i think that would be really perfect for me um obviously something that's lightweight i was actually contemplating on trying to make one um but kind of the fact that i've got a um or the fact that i would probably have to alter it with a hammer the, the you know the blade just like a traditional wooden plane or a japanese wood air um kana and i kind of didn't really want to do that um you know because i've i've never really you know like taught myself how to how to use wooden planes um and i think that's kind of why i shy away from them so yeah i am kind of on the lookout for one 
So next on the list, um, I'm gonna go over some saws. So specifically saw handles. Um, so I've actually got a quite a big rip saw, and it is actually pictured on the thumbnail. That's a Dorchester. I don't typically tend to use it um, a great deal. Uh, but when I do use it, you know, it is um, quite proficient. So one of the things I, I do like about it um, is the handle. I think, I think the handle is well designed, although it doesn't fit my hand like very well. But that is same again, that's just because I've got small hands. But I do like the ergonomics or the way it's been designed you know and I, and I think this sets like um you know sores apart well I you, you pay you know money to get a decent saw um or you go on the cheaper side and you get like one that's not the way the handle's not as well designed so to give you an example of this the Dorchester I don't think it was super expensive but it is you, you could say it was medium like in the medium range maybe so what I like about it is that um, where your thumb and your first finger obviously you've got the arch there I like the way it fits you know obviously you've got the, the, the top nib of the saw handle I like the way you kind of uh, the arch uh, between your thumb and your first finger kind of fits like snugly under there it's just a really really nice fit um you know for me that's a sign of a good saw um especially if you're doing um you know all your ripping by hand i know i know not everyone does that but there's you know there is a number of work that do do that so that's one thing uh, to look out for if you were gonna you know be buying um a saw in my opinion anyway so in the palm of your hand as well i like it's because it actually curves in into the palm of your hand. Now, a lot of people may be saying more saws do that, and they actually don't, or at least not as much as that one does. Yes, I have seen saws where they just kind of don't do that, and they're just not comfortable to use. It's silly little things like this, or at least silly what you think or what I think might be silly little things um, that actually you know will bring a saw to life in your hand or make it so comfortable, make it a pleasure to use. Um. So, going on to maybe you know the likes of dovetail saws and your small tenon saws. Um, I do tend to find the handles do tend to be a little bit littler, um, which is really good for me. Um, obviously having small hands. Um, same again. Um, I I, I tend to like a lot of these. Um, with the. Uh, with the way they fit into the arch um, of your hand between your thumb and your first finger. Um, with the tenon saws um, or the dovetail saws, um, a lot of them, quite quite a lot of them have actually got like the nib at the top um, and you can actually get your thumb over the top of that and that does actually help you to, to control and balance the saw um, as well as... Um, using your first finger for balance and control as well um, and obviously with them being smaller you can actually get your thumb over and it is actually doable for me especially with me having um, smaller hands so i've just realized that i've just kind of jumped ahead of myself here and i was going to give you two comparisons um you know in, in between saw saw handles um so going back to the first saw I mentioned which was the Dorchester so if you can if you can refresh yourself of what I said about that now there's a there's actually a saw Paul Sellers recommends um, and I've actually got a couple of these saws and they are good saws I cannot fault them you know um, they do cut really well um, and one of the main things about them you can actually resharpen them so the Spear and Jackson handles um, or the saw roller, I've, I've actually just had to go on um, 
on the internet and actually check uh, the name of them for the life of us I could not remember the, uh, what they were called but obviously the Spear and Jackson so the the saw itself as I said I kind of felt it it is really good saw um, but the handle um, I'm not saying the handle is super bad you just can't tell the difference um, obviously uh, the cost you know there's a big cost difference in these um, I think like uh, you know for the panel so I think it's like somewhere in the region of £20 somewhere something like that um, the handles are acceptable but that the handles on the Spear and Jackson um, are they as comfortable as the Dorchester no no way in ya at all um, I find these you know there's obviously less time spent on them um, I think um between your thumb and your first finger, the arch, it's nowhere near as comfortable. Um, I find the handle tends to be a little bit more square, if that makes sense. And I don't, I kind of mean more square in the sense that it's not rounded over as much on, on you know, the, the section, um, you know, on the arch of your thumb and first finger. Um, even in the palm of your hand, it's kind of not, it's not as as um, rounded over, if you like. Um, you know, that's just my um, my observation. Um, obviously, I do own two of those saws. I do use them not so much these days because I am more of a fan of the the Japanese saws now. But you know, I do use them, but. I will say when you are using them, if you've got multiple cuts, it can actually make your your hands ache. I know you can get this with all tools, uh, obviously with repetitive use, um, you know, over hours of use or, or whatever. But you know, I just find those those handles um, not very comfortable. So a quick note on Japanese saws. The, the handles on those um i don't know the full history of the of the japanese so um and it actually might be something to look into for myself might be um, interesting because i do actually like the history of tools and whatnot um what i will say about them is obviously the japanese handle of the saw is actually like relatively straight um, it has some some wrapping around it. I, I, for the life of us, I can't think of the the name of the wrapping. Um, regardless of that, um, from time to time, the will slip, or at least the will slip in my hand. Um, that's more ripping when I'm using. You know, if I'm using the the Ryoba saw and I'm actually ripping, it can actually um, slip from time to time. It's it's not a major slip, you know, not not where I'm, you know, it's pulling it out with my hands. Um, but I do feel I always have to grip grip the saw that little bit more, um, you know, tighter if you like. Um, I, while I was writing the notes, um, actually for this podcast, I was thinking, you know, would it be worth kind of messing around with a handle for a Japanese saw? You know, it would actually be quite, you know, quite interesting to see how it would uh, work. You know, have I actually done maybe a groove, even just for my first finger? Um, obviously, if you can picture how you you would hold the Japanese saw. So, obviously, the thumb on top, uh, you know, to to use as your balance. Um, and your first finger um, would, would wrap around and... You know, I, I was actually thinking about doing a little bit of an indentation, um, maybe just one, or you know, maybe for the four fingers. I'm kind of a little bit unsure about that. I don't know how that would work, um, but I was actually thinking about that, and that would take some of the strain off having to like grip the saw so hard. Um, I do actually know they have actually brought out a. Uh, um, a saw, or, or at least Gayo, uh, Gayogo, um, if I'm saying that right, has that's the that's the preferred company who I get my saws from. They've actually brought out a handle and it's got some sort of um, a material on it, where it's supposed to be kind of squidgy but hard at the same time. 
Um, I don't know how that <laughs> I don't know how that works, but that's what it says, and it's supposed to give you a lot more grip. Um, so I was kind of actually kind of wanting to try it out, but me being me, and I've talked about this before, I just kind of I don't really like plastic handles and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm more like kind of like like you know natural materials and wood. Um, but I will say I was tempted just to, you know, to try it out. Um, obviously, if it works as well as what I think it does and what the the boast it does, you know, I could kind of m maybe live with that. Um, but yeah, that's uh, something to consider if you are going to go out and buy one of those saws. Next up is a brace and bits. Um, I quite like the bracing bits. Um, I know there's, I know there's quite a few people that don't like it and they think it's um, obsolete. Um, I think it's very far from obsolete. Um, I really like the design of the bracing bits. Um, we'll we'll start off with the, with the top um, handle section, the palm. I really like the way it's been designed. There's just a slight arch on it, uh, like a dome, if you will. Um, it's very slight. I think that's a perfect fit. It is for my hand anyway, for the palm of my hand, the one I own, and it's actually also pictured in the thumbnail. Um, I think it's just really, really perfect. Um, you know, it's very simple, but the the ergonomics of it, it's just very nice. So, you know, it fits nice in your palm, and then I tend to put it um, into my solar. Uh, um, not not the the handle itself but obviously i put the i put my palm on it um and then kind of rest me hand against my solar plexus and that just feels really comfortable and really natural to me um obviously sometimes i will put it on my face um but yeah it's really comfortable i also like the the handle on the crank on the crank um the, the turning section um same again just on mine um I, i'm surmising it's pretty much the same for the others because i don't think the design changes a great deal with the bracing bit um i just feel that's a nice fit there's just a nice um kind of um oval on that if you will if that's if that's the right word i'm using it's just a nice fit um you know and they do actually work quite well um you know i know a lot of people um have, have stated otherwise but i'm kind of guessing that's because they haven't got sharp bits or they don't know how to sharpen the bits correctly um i will say the design of it works very well up until one inch i think after one inch it can become quite hard well i don't think i know <laughs> i know it can be, become quite hard even if you've got like a you know short bits i mean i think the biggest bit i've got is one and a quarter inches and that depending on the material that can be a bit of a nightmare going through the material um on mine i've actually got a ratchet um um, a ratchet feature and i will actually use the ratchet fe feature when i am up to an inch and a quarter it's just you know i don't by any any circumstance say that i'm a weak man you know I, I do actually think i'm quite strong but you know i do have to use the um the ratchet feature on it obviously i know you can actually get larger um bracing the uh, bits you know where the handle will actually extend more giving you more leverage um but i've never come across one of those um if i do you know if i'm at a flea market or a car boot sale i would probably purchase it just just for the larger bits and i've only got one large bit that's as the largest bit i've i've ever seen you know if you can get larger bits that will fit into a brace and bits you know leave a comment say, on one of my social media platforms i'd really like to, to know about that so I think I'm gonna call it a day. Um, I think I've rather it on a much, uh, enough now. So again, thanks very much for listening. Um, thanks for everyone that's been following us um, on the social media, all the new follower followers, and for everyone that's been following us for quite some time. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. And until the next time, I shall speak to you later.